Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here today. Um, as you are aware, we continue to study the angelic activities, which is the end times. We are the Revelation chapter 18. And as we started from Revelation chapter 1, we've been with Revelation chapter 18. The videos of these teachings are available on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, I will advise you that you continue. You continue to, to go back because some of the teachings, you have to actually sit down, take your time, and listen to them one more time. Given that the pictures, picture quality is not clear, you know, there are a few limitations. One thing that we can attest and confirm is that the, the message is clear, and therefore pay attention to the message, not the picture qualities or all those unnecessary stuff. And consume the word of God, consume the grace of God into your life to wake you up so that you may be able to see the trickly and the plans of the enemy in these end times. Because it is incumbent upon us and unto us as each and every Christian, God-loving person, to research and take absolute control of the word of God. Not only researching the word of God, but also knowing the times and the days that we are in. Because it's very important. If you do not know the times and the days, then you, you can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you might not get anything. So to understand a prophecy coming to pass, as I say, you must know the scripture and you must also know the times and the day that you find yourself so that you'll be able to compare what is going on with what is written in the scripture to know where we are. And as I spoke the other time, I say, looking at the constant situation or how things are going and where we find ourselves, we find ourselves in Revelation chapter 6 and we are at chapter 4 and uh, chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. Because you can just read and you can just see. And last week, I made an assertion here, which is not even an assertion, a declaration. That what the devil has been using against us is called phrase, phraseology, okay? The word phraseology means phrasing uh, something that is very, very, very crazy or demonic to make it user-friendly. So if you go somewhere, what you hear is that the, we all know that homosexuality is not good. Now, they don't call it that. They call it gay. All right? Then they change the name. Then they call it LGBT rights. It is like they are changing the meaning of things because if they are able to change the meaning, then they are able to lie to you. So if you look at the scripture, the Bible says that the one who lies is from this father. The father of all liars is the devil. Now, listen to this carefully. The devil always does not lie to us 100%. Because if the devil came to you and lied to you 100%, you know there is a devil activated in your midst. But if the devil will come to you and lie to you, maybe 0.5% or even 1%. But as I always say, if I give you a cup or a glass of best water in the world, that you are so thirsty, I gave you a cup, a, a glass of water, and I did a tiny little bit of poison in it. You might not know that the glass contain poison. However, if you do not die instantly, the poison will affect you as time goes on. And you will ultimately die of your poison until you meet the grace of God on the way. So the devil came to Jesus in Matthew 4, 4. And the devil lied to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. 
Because everything the devil was saying to Jesus was scriptural. It was the things that God has spoken. It is written. So the devil was quoting a scripture to Jesus. The devil quoting scriptures to Jesus. Why? Because the context of the scripture could cause it to be a false what, quotation. Because it has been taken out of context. And the devil said to Jesus, if you are really the son of God, just cast yourself. But it is written, he shall make sure that his angels are in charge of thee, that your leg shall not hit a stone, so you will not dash. They will carry you. The context of it is misleading. But the quotation that the devil provided is right. Why am I talking about this? Because this is the one thing that it has been eluding a lot of Christians. There has been a lot of deception. Revelation chapter 17 talked about deception. You see, Revelation 17 said that the woman what is the religion, the power of the authorities that may be, that authority could not take control and rule the kings of this world and the powers of this world, whereby the kings and the rulers of this world surrounded their own authority willingly to this religion, to this authority, to this woman, to this illusion. That was possible, or that has become possible because they were lied or they have been lied. They, 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 they have been lied to. So you ask yourself this question, which is very simple. How come those people who are highly educated, who are very, very smart, who are very rich, who have all the social status and the A-listers in life, how could they be so stupid that they, could not, they cannot see that the only salvation in the world that they can have is through Christ? That you waste, you, you take your time, you look at a lot of billionaires and billionaires, they are buying themselves doomsday bunker. That they are buying themselves a bunker of millions of pounds or dollars. Because in their mind, one thing they know for sure is that this world is going to go to an end. So they are going to find themselves a hole inside the earth that hide there. And if they hide there, when the destruction of the Lord is coming, it will not see them. In their mind, the devil has told them that what is going to destroy this world is climate change and global warming. So they have made a contingency plan against global warming. Do you understand that if these people knew the truth, that there was no global warming that is going to end the world, however, it is the wrath of God that is going to end the world, do you understand that they would have made a different decision? Hmm. They would have definitely made a different decision because they would have known that the bunker that they have paid for them to be built to hide from nuclear weapons, to hide from climate change and disasters, it was not possible to, it's not possible to save them. But even those rich people, those smart people, those intelligent people, they have been lied to. And I used to say that, I said this last week, or a few weeks ago. You see, if a man is lying on the ground, he's not afraid of falling. And the Bible says, you should take, watch out, because you can fall. But when you're already on the ground, you're not afraid of falling, because you're still lying down. 
And when you are lying down, you are, you are not a threat to the devil. This is why the devil is not paying too much attention on you. Because let me give you an example. If as I'm talking to you right now, the Spirit of God went to touch the heart of Oprah Winfrey. Or went to touch the heart of any other person. Name it. And the person came out and said, oh, thank you, Jesus. I have found out that there is only salvation that belongs to me and the whole world is Jesus. And I will give it all and I, I will surrender myself to only Jesus and no one else. Do you understand? Because of that celebrity, the amount of people who will begin to reevaluate their life with Christ. Because they will think in that, ah, if Oprah Winfrey, with all her richness and the money, has decided to handle everything and give her life to Jesus, then maybe I have to have a second look at Jesus. But you, you have been Christian for a very long time. And sometimes when you talk to people about Christ, they don't want to hear you. You know why they don't want to hear you? Because they think you're no you. The devil see you that, oh, I already got you. The devil might think that you're already on the ground. But he's more interested in the people who have opinion, who can sway opinions. And those rich people, those, those, those celebrities, the devil has made them completely foolish. They have been foolish. They have been, they, they, they have been lied to, to the point that they don't even remember their name. A whole Supreme Court judge could not say who is a woman. A Supreme Court judge of the United States of America, they asked her on their confirmation. Kitanji Brown. They asked her, can you please tell us who is the woman? She said, I do not know what the definition of a woman is. And yet, she is highly educated, Ivy League educated, going and now currently as a high court of the United States judge, a justice over there. But she said, I, I don't know. There was one man who came there and asked her, can you tell her what is a woman? The man said, I am not a woman, therefore I cannot tell you who, who or what is a woman. The question here is that you are not a dog, but you know you are not a dog. You, you know what dog is. You are not a monkey, but you can find a monkey. You are not a car, but you can see what is a car. So why can't you know what is a woman is? Because now, the attack of the spirit, demonic infiltrations. You see, we remember I told you of phraseology. The devil wrap poison with a nice wrapper. All right, so what is inside this is a poison, but the wrapper looks so good. I want you to pay attention with the points that I'm making because I'm going to take you to the scripture. I'm going to show you all these things in the Bible. This is what I'm talking about, all these things. Because once I finish with it, I'm going to take you to the Bible and show you all these things. If any man tell you that I don't believe in the Bible or I don't believe in God, the Bible says the person is a fool. You see, because it's only a fool who can see something and yet pretend that that thing does not exist. It's only a fool. Because if you can see that the sky is blue, roses are red and violets are blue, then you should be able to know that what is going on is already written. 
And if what is going on is already written before these things started going on, then it should prick your curiosity that why or how 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 could that person not have known? But but maybe I should take something. But yet they don't want to know. You see. Most of the people do not believe in God, not, the, not because they think God is possible. They don't believe in God because if they begin to believe in God and Jesus, then the question is what next? That means they have to live their life as spoken by Christ and they are not prepared for that sacrifice. And because they are not prepared for that sacrifice, they tell themselves there is no God. Most people who say that they are atheists, they don't believe in God. One time in their life, either them or a family member they really love was a Christian. They change the name. The Bible says in the end times, the son of perdition, the man of sin, when he came, it will change time. But how do you change a time? You have to change the things around time. You have to change every single thing. Right now, they tell you abortion is not called abortion. It is called women reproductive health care. So when you hear this, no abortion comes to mind. But you go to the hospitals and you tell them, I'm coming for women with reproductive health care. All what they know is that you are coming for abortion. But okay. you say this thing to a layman on the street, the person will think, that, oh, this is, this is something that will help women to get pregnant. No, it is something that takes a baby out of women. Now, the question you do not, you might not know is that there has been a God, a demon, that has existed for a very long time, and all what from the days of Mesopotamians and the Sumerians and Akkadians, until the days of the Canaanites, until the days of the Israelites, the Jebusites, and the Heracites, till all those times, this God has been around there till now, from the time of ancient Egypt, that people have to sacrifice their children to this God. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, it has been what? Modified. It is now a sophistication. So when you go, you just do that. You commit all those things. You do all those things. What you do not know is that that particular place you are giving that blood out you think you're just throwing it away, but it's going somewhere. Because as I always say, the devil does not care about what your intention is. As long as you do what the devil wants, whether it's from your heart or it's not from your heart, it does not make a difference to the devil. All right? Because the devil is not a God. It's not God. It's not, he's not Yahweh. That he wants you to do things from your heart. The devil is in that he does not care. No demon cares whether you meant what you said or you do not mean it. Mm. You don't care. This is why when you are, you as a Christian, every word that will come out from your mouth, you have to be careful. Because you might say something that you do not mean it and the devil will take care of it. The devil is not Yahweh. He's not the almighty God. You can make a promise to the devil without, like you are laughing or you don't mean it. Or the devil take it serious. It's a contract to him. Let's go to the scriptures quickly. I want to show you something here. You remember I told you. Revelation chapter 17 told us straight away about what has been going on. And what has been going on is the spirit of deception. The spirit of deception has masqueraded herself in the form of a different religion. And the form of a different religion in the Bible is confirmed by the word Babylon. 
Because Babylon is a day and it's a place and it's a time and it's a dispensation where human beings, men rejected God and they decided to follow their own God or other gods. The book of Genesis tells us, the book of Genesis gives us a complete idea of what has happened or what happened. When Nimrod founded the city of Babylon, the actual name is called Kadigira, as I have always said. And the Kadigira in Sumerian tongue means the gates of the gods. That means that God gave him the strength to overcome his enemies, to do all these things. However, at the point where Nimrod became strong, he founded a city. He did not put Yahweh there, but he introduced the city to other gods. And told Yahweh, screw you. Thank you for bringing me this far. I don't need you anymore. Huh? And the question here is that if God has helped Nimrod to this far, made him rich, made him powerful, made him great, why that now everything is good for Nimrod? Why has Nimrod rejected him? And it all come. To the heart of man. You see, when, 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 when we are poor, when you have nothing, you are so serious with Christ. When God begins to bless you, you begin to give excuses. That your commitment with Christ is gone. You are not different from Nimrod, I am not different from Nimrod. And this is why I pray that in the name of Jesus, the grace of God find me and you so that we may keep our first love as we came to Christ. Because you cannot be a Christian if you've lost your first love. It will not be accepted by Christ. He has already said so. Let's go to the scriptures, ladies and gentlemen. Revelation chapter 18. We're reading from verse 7. Revelation chapter 18, verse 7. Yes. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit enthroned as queen. I am not a widow. I will never mourn. Now hold on. Hold on, please. It says in her heart. She boasts. She boasts. What is going on here? You see, this, all these things are metaphor. Even the woman is not a woman. As I've already explained, it's talking about a religion. And what is the religion? The religion is called secularism. Okay, this is the religion. It's called secularism. So if you go someplace, they tell you, oh, oh, here, here, here is a secular place. We don't care. Because let me tell you, some time ago, they said that, oh, British is a Christian nation. Oh, American is a Christian nation, right? Now they say that, oh, no, we are a secular what? Nation. Do you understand the transition? When you are, when you begin to define who you are, that is an identity. An identity is what makes you. If you are a Christian, it means that you are a son of God. You have been born again with the blood. Of, so that is an identity. It defines who you are. If somebody say that I am just a secular person, it's also an identity that belongs to the person. 
whether they know it or they don't know it. You remember I told you the devil does not care whether you understand or not. As long as you do his bidding, is good enough for him. So when you hear people talking about all those things, you have to understand that you are hearing somebody confessing his faith or her faith before you. So if you go to a school, nowadays they bring drug queens to come to the school to show the little girls and the little boys at the age of three, four, five, six, seven years old how to twerk, how to move their bum. To show them hmm. how to play with your sexual genital organs, your genitalia. To show little boys at the age of seven and eight how to masturbate. To teach little girls how to put condom on the cucumber. Children less than the age of 12 who are not even reach any point of puberty. Lately, the government has come out with, a, with, with, with education about sexual stuff, sex education, to children who do not even know about sex. In, 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 to, to the point that even the movies that they watch, they are not allowed to see a movie where there is a sex in it. They are bringing it to the school. Hmm. What you do not understand is that they tell you, oh, we want to educate them. But the question you ask yourself is that if you are teaching these children at the age of six and seven and eight about sex, what sort of good education can, can that be for them? You see, you don't educate people of the things they do not need. Unless you are indoctrinating them. Because when you go through education, you learn of things that you can make use of. But indoctrination, you do not have to make use of it. It is supposed to shape how you think. It's supposed to shape how you perceive things. So even though you are not going to use it, consciously or unconsciously, your plan is to what? Alter your thinking. So that you will not be able to, to dissect between the things of God and the things of the enemy. When they blur the lines, it destroy and remove the moral fabric of from the system. And if there is a moral fabric removed, then God has been removed because the, the, the giver of morals is from God. So as Christians are just wasting their time, the devil has progressed even to go for your children and your babies. To destroy them before they grow. This is a demonic attack from the pits of hell, right in front of our eyes. And yet, what Christians talk about is that we want to be diverse, diversity, inclusion, we want to be tolerant. What we fail to see is that why the diversity and the inclusion and the tolerance only go one side, but it does not come to the other side. Mm -hmm. If you go to any gathering anywhere and you begin to play Christian music, go to a school right now or public school and say you want to pray there for the kids. They will tell you, no, 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 you can't do here. But they can bring somebody there to rap, to rap gangster rap. They can bring somebody there to show them how to dance and twerk their bounce. 
they can bring somebody there mm. for any other reasons, but you Christians, you are not allowed there. And they tell you they are inclusive. If they are inclusive, then how did they manage to exclude you because you are Christian, because you are praying there? You see, the whole idea and the words that they use mean the opposite. Because it's a lie. The lie has been masqueraded into a very nice wrapper that when you look at the wrapper, in your mind, you think it's supposed to be good. Because normally when you buy a candy, you look at the wrapper, then your mouth begins to water. Because you think that because the wrapper looks good, what is inside the wrapper must also taste good. But here is a different thing. You are dealing with demonic deception. Showing off as a virtue. But Christians are asleep because we have given that chance for the devil to operate this far. The Bible says they keep boasting because the way things are going, the way all this religion, the found religion is going, that even though people don't know it is a religion, because you see, there is nothing called neutral. When you come to God, there is nothing called God, I am not for you, and I'm not for the devil. There is nothing called neutral. It is either you belong to God or you belong to something else. Mm -hmm. You see, the, 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 the standard, the yardstick here is not because you belong to someone else and you do not belong or you don't belong to anybody, then you are you get salvation. No, there's yes to here is that you have to believe in Christ. That is the only way to salvation. You can decide that I don't want to believe in Christ, I don't want to believe in the devil, I don't want to believe in anything. Therefore, God, I must have salvation. No, because the standard, the yardstick is known that if you want to come to this Christ, his mansion, that is preparing for his people who trust him, who have given their life to him, then the yardstick here is to believe in the one who is building the mansion or who is preparing his mansion. Because you cannot get to somebody's house if you do not respect the person. You cannot get to a house of a somebody if that somebody you think is not real. Because if that person is not real, then the house is not also real. Then which house are you planning to go? Because for the, for, for the house to be there, that person must be there in order to build the house. But you see, the devil has removed simple logic, simple mental diversity, using their own word, from them, that even though they speak, their mind is changed. They cannot perceive and see through the deception of the enemy. Why? Because the Bible gives us the reason why they cannot see, because their heart is full of corruption. They are greedy. That's the only way. And the Bible says that. We're going to look at it quickly. Revelation chapter 18, verse 9. It says, and the kings of the earth. Now pay attention here, ladies and gentlemen, carefully, please. Those who are listening to us from YouTube, I want you to take your Bible, take some pen and paper and write things down and begin to do your own research. Because this is very important. This is about life and death. Your life and depends on it. Revelation chapter 18, verse 9. And the kings of this earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her. You see, this is the question. This is what I want you to pay attention. The reason why the kings of this earth 
those authorities, those presidents, those powers, those celebrities who have led the way to hand over the authorities of this kingdom, authorities of these nations into deception is because it makes them rich. It makes them rich. You see, the more they remove the focus from Christ, and if they bring the focus to themselves, then straight away what happened is that it comes with all the due. So the things that should have gone to Christ, now they are receiving it. They are receiving the fame that belongs to Christ, the glory that belongs to Christ, the riches that belongs to Christ. It, so it makes them rich. It helps them to attain and control their power. So if that is what gives to them, there is no way they will be able to even see the other way because they have been corrupted. Hmm. They have been corrupted. This is why you and me can see what is going on, but they cannot see it. Hmm. Because their hearts, their minds, their souls are all corrupted. You see, for someone to hand over his or her destiny to you, it means that the person in his mind or her mind knows that if I give my destiny to Mr. A or Mr. X, Mr. A or Mr. X is, is, is able to reward me more than what I have given. So, so we gave our life to Christ. The reason why we have given our life to Christ is that we know that Christ is able to reward us, to give us eternal life. So the life that we wanted to hold, we are prepared to lose it for the sake of Christ so that we can gain it in the future and live with Christ in eternity. These people, in their mind, to surrender their life to whoever, in their mind, that they have understood that they, it is going to benefit them also. But what they see is just in things that is right around them, 50 years, 20 years, 30 years maximum of gain. Because they are not seeing the big picture. Because they have corrupted even their soul before the devil came. Because the Bible says there is no temptation that should come that is bigger than us. So for the devil to take their soul and corrupt them because it means that their heart were already corrupted waiting for the devil to come. Hmm. They have already made their decision that they want to be they want to be rich, they want to be famous, they want to be powerful, they want to control. And the devil came as their guest to just help them, to broker a deal with them. So you hear the politicians standing there and talking, no, 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 we have to be all inclusive. Imagine, you know, it is about our LGBT, WWQ, XYZ, plus, plus, plus people and their rights and their right of gay marriage and their right of transgenders and their right, but you never hear the right of Christians. And it always saying that Christians will give in for that demonic attack. But they tell you that, oh, it is act of love. How could it be act of love if all what you're doing is to helping people to go and burn forever in eternity, destroying their souls and misguiding them? How can that be out of love? Then you hear Christian preachers. In a city center, Cardiff, I went there and I saw a cathedral, an old church, they put a gay flag in front of it, showing that we we, we respect our uh, we respect the gays and the lesbians, and this place is all inclusive because Jesus accepts everybody. And you ask yourself, where 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 from hell these people came from? Or do they think that Jesus is a stupid man or a blind man? But when they have been corrupted 
You see, the person who put that thing there is not looking for the acceptance of God. He's looking for acceptance of the people. So even though he carries the name of God, he is working not for God, but he's working for the devil. Mm. So this is what the Bible says, no, it's not unto, it's not everyone who says God, God shall enter into the kingdom of God. But also do the will of God. You can, you can be a clergy with a big bow tie, like the size of, of 20 tank, 18 uh, 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 wheeler. If you don't do, if you don't do what God has asked you to do, you, you, you are wasting your time. And these people are happy because in their mind, they think that when people have accepted them, therefore God has accepted them. And the Bible has made it completely clear that when men, has, uh, when men praises you and when men are happy with you, be what? Woe unto you, be wary. Why? Because it means that you are drifting from the grace of God. The Bible says, Revelation chapter 18, verse 9. Revelation 18, 9. When the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her and shed her lazarus see the smoke of her burning, they will weep and mourn over her. Now, hold on. Why would they weep and mourn? Because they know their gravy trade is burning. If you have a business, and one day you went to your business, and that business is so lucrative, a very lucrative business that you enter that place, and the place just boom, it's burning down, you will cry. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what's going on. The woman, the religion, Babylon, infested. And it's infesting this city, this nation, this kingdom, this world. Not because the devil is strong, but because the leadership, the people have been bought and they have sold their soul to the devil for their own greediness. Why are they crying? They tell you that, oh, 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 you cannot, you cannot have a factory here because of global warming. So move the factory to China. Oh, no, 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 no. Global warming here is too much that you have to change everything. You can't have fossil fuel. But the factories can be in China and use fossil fuel and do all what he's supposed to do and bring it back to here and sell. Is that good? Oh, yeah, that is good. That is good. But you cannot do it here in the UK. No, no, no. You can't do it in America. No. Yeah, you know, because of global warming. And the, it just begs the question, is China in another planet? Say China, is it on Mars? But when you look at their thinking, their thinking don't make sense. Do you understand? The reason is that what you're saying does not make sense because it's not about making sense. It's about taking power and authority. Last week, I told you about ESG. And ESG is a standard that now they have introduced that before a company can do business with another company, they want to make sure the company has ESG record. Now, the ESG team, even for the nations, it tells them that they have to cut the carbon emission down. What is the whole idea of cutting or doing all these things or they've introduced all these things? They have introduced this big lie. And, and the funny thing again is, is some of Christians even believe in this stupidity. So you ask a Christian, it's global warming. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's global warming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we don't stop, the ozone layer will deplete. And if the ozone layer will deplete, and, and the carbon is everywhere, and the carbon, carbon, and the carbon will come down, and the ozone layer deplete, and we are all bad because the sun rays is going to come, and the sun rays is going to give everyone cancer. That's what they say. Then the whole world 
will go under the sea, or the whole world will burn, and the world will go to an end, and there will be nuclear radiation and the Holocaust, and nobody will be able to live, and all the cockroaches and the human beings will die, and the dinosaurs will die just like everybody died, and the tyrannosaurs will not come back to life, and we are all going to be extinct. They talk about these foolish things. And Christians believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do we have to do? We have to change our life so that this world does not come to an end. And they, they, I say, how can you be a Christian and believe it in this nonsense? Because the only way the world comes to an end is never through global warming, it's through the word of God. It's either you believe the word of God or you believe in that, that religion. The secular religion that is telling you that no, 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 it's not God who's doing that, but it is man who's bringing all these things because of fossil fuel. Do you understand? Oh. The devil knows that you can see that the world is coming to an end. If the devil does not come with a big lie to blindfold you, then you will revert back to the scriptures and begin to look at the scriptures and see that uh, 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 something is wrong somewhere. I have to begin to search for Christ. Hmm. But if the devil lied to you and bring you this wombo jumbo, this crazy stuff, then it does not give you the wake up call to begin to look for Christ. So you begin to bow and buy the lies. Because the Bible says the only one who is going to destroy this world is the one who created this world. And that is God. And the stupid thing here that I look at it, I don't know whether it chuckles me to cry or to pray. That if God says, I'm going to destroy the world, do you think you can buy your bunker out of that? If God says, I'm destroying the world, do you think that any man is able to hide from the wrath of God? What they don't know is that the Bible has even made it completely clear that there is nowhere to hide. There is nowhere to, 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 to escape. But yet, some fools think that they can go. Take me to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6, we're reading from verse 15. Revelation chapter 6, verse 15. Yes. Then the kings of the earth. Now you hear that he's talking about the same people again that we read. The same people who have been reached who have made more money, who have authority, who have power. The Bible is talking about them. You see that it's not talking about the poor people right now, is it? Then the kings of the earth, uh -huh. the princes, the princes, the generals, the generals, the rich, all the rich, the mighty, uh -huh. and everyone else, and everyone else, both slave, both slave, Three, mm -hmm. hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountain. They hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountain. They think that they can escape the wrath of God. Mm. They think that they could do that. They have too much money and they think that they can buy themselves out from all their troubles with money. If they were not smart enough, before they came, King Solomon was already here, and King Solomon was the richest man in the whole world before any man could be rich. Hmm. Why is he? What makes man think that they can buy themselves out of everything? They called to the mountains and the rocks. Now, when they went into the mountains and the rock, they understood that the mountains and the rock still could not save them. They feel the heat. They feel the wrath of God coming. 
They feel that uh, 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 this thing is still not working. My bunker is not working. I need something. The air conditioning in these bunkers are still not working. The heat is coming. So now they want to make a deal. They want to make a second deal. And what deal is that? Fall on us and hide us from the face of So they want to the make field. a deal with the mountain, saying to the mountain, do what? Fall on us. Fall on us. And hide us from and, the face of him. And hide us from the face of him. Who sits on the throne and from the wrath of lamb. Now, do you understand? Now, when they go into their bunkers and hide, and they realize it's not working, they will make another deal. They have first made a deal with the Satan, deal and follow the different religion and follow anything but God. And when it did not work, instead of them going to God and ask for forgiveness, they decided to make another deal again, this time with the mountain. This time with the cave. As I tell you, everything that you see, everything that they tell you, you as a Christian must understand that it is either God, either Jesus, or the devil. That should be your default thinking. That should be your default way, how you see things, your default. There is nothing Besides these two things, it's good versus evil. There is no white line, and there is no blair lines, and there is no gray lines. It's black and white. It's black and white. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 18 quickly. Go back to Revelation chapter 18 quickly. We understood that the kings of this world, the reason why they get corrupted is because they are what? Their hearts themselves were corrupted before the devil came. Their greediness, the way that they want to control things, the way that they want things to be them instead of Christ. So they are happy, to, they want to receive the praise of men that they forgot that their life does not belong to them, but it belongs to Jesus Christ. Go with verse 10. Yeah, verse Chapter 10. 18, verse 10. Go ahead. Terrified at her torment, mm -hmm. they will stand far off and cry. Yes. Woe. Woe to you, great city, you mighty city of Babylon. In one hour, your doom has come. Now, if the Bible belongs to you, I want you to underline that word. I want you to underline the word in one hour. It is very, very important. Today, I was, just, I was just meditating upon it. Why is the Bible making it clear? One hour, one hour, one hour, one hour, one hour. Why not two hours? Why not three hours? But why one hour? If you go to Revelation chapter 16 and Revelation chapter 17. It tells us why one hour. Amen. Amen. It tells us why. And maybe we can we, we can have a look at it quickly. It tells us why one hour. Why? Because you see, 
When you look at the scripture, the scripture tells us completely. Go to Revelation chapter 17, verse 12. Revelation chapter 17, verse 12. Mm -hmm. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom. Mm -hmm. So but now, for one wait, wait, wait. I want you to pay attention. It's still talking about those kings, those authority, those powers. Do you understand? Yeah. So the context here is still talking about the same people. And look at how he described them. In what time frame? Please continue. But who for one hour? Who for what? One hour. For what? One hour. Will receive authority as kings along with the beast. Who for one what? Uh, one hour. Now let's go back to verse 8, chapter 18. Chapter 18, verse 8. Read from verse, read verse 17. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. In one hour. In one hour. Such great wealth has been brought to Rome. Such great wealth has been brought to Rome. Now go to 19. 19, verse 19. Mm -hmm. They will throw dust on their heads. Yes. And with weeping and mourning, cry out, mm -hmm. Woe, woe to you, great city, where all who had ships on the sea became rich through her wealth. In one hour, she has been brought to rest. Now hold on. So now you can see the actions and everything is based on one hour. So I ask myself, why one hour? Because it could be two hours, it could be 20 hours, it could be 50 hours, it could be 100 hours, but why is it Bible making it a big deal of one hour? Time is very important because if time is not important, then Jesus will not even make it anything important. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Take me to the book of Matthew quickly. Matthew chapter 26, verse 40. Matthew 26, verse 40. Mm -hmm. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? For what? For one hour, he asked Peter. Why? Now, I know, are you, are you understanding where we are getting to? Hmm. The Bible is talking about one hour. One hour. One hour for destruction. One hour. For prayer, one hour of time. Now, what we are looking at here, we are looking at time. Amen. Mm -hmm. We are looking at time. But the question here is that why God in his wisdom is using this particular time frame. I'm going to tell you something. The mystery behind it is that this world that you see is the physical world because you can see me and I can see you. The reason why we are in this physical world is that the body that our, our soul, our spirit rests, is made 
of the things of this world. Jesus said to Nicodemus that he who is born of the spirit is what? And of the flesh is flesh. Depending where and how you are born will determine the sort of realm you belong. What is made up of you will determine the realm that you belong. But if the Bible says that the manifestation of the flesh is what has happened in the spirit, that tells me that the minimum time frame between the spirit and the physical realm could be one hour. I'm talking to you of a deep revelation here. And as time goes on, besides this teaching, once this teaching ends, I have a very powerful teaching that we can go into the scripture, then we can go into different dispensation. It can even go into mysticism to see that even those people who do not believe in God know about this ancient secret. Knows about this ancient secret. So when God, when the scripture begin to make things in one hour, in one hour, when you look at the time that Jesus prayed for somebody, the Bible says, and in the hour, the person received the healing. In that same hour, the cripple walked. In the same hour, do you understand? Why the Bible is making a point about the same hour, in the same hour, in one hour, in the same hour. Because there is a spiritual transition. The spirit, spiritual world is ahead of the physical world. This is why the Bible says pray so that you may not go into what? Temptation. That means when you pray, your prayer goes into what? Everything that spiritually has been arranged and your prayer come to smash them away from you. So if there is a trap set in front of you, before one hour, the time that you get there, your prayer has eliminated that threat. There is a man in the scriptures. This man was a servant of Jeremiah, the prophet. You might not see it in the Bible here, as I'm telling you. But you can find it in the other books. The Bible says, he was sent to go to under a tree. Listen to this carefully. To go and collect something, I think a food for the prophet. The man just went there and just fell asleep under a tree because he was tired. When we got up, he realized that all the cities changed. He was rushing coming, and the man didn't know that he has stayed under that tree for 16 years. To him, he thought he lied there for one hour, but he has stayed there for 16 years. That by the time he woke up, everything around him was changed. You see, you don't know about that. Because they did not put that in the in the canonized Bible that you have, but it is in the other scriptures, which are still referenced in the Bible here. This is why I'm telling you 
by the grace of God, once we finish with this teaching, there are a whole lot of bunker busting things I will be showing you in the scripture and other books from the scripture. But the man thought he slept for one hour. But he slept under a tree for 16 years. Now he begs the question, how could he sleep for under the tree for 60 years? So nobody saw him sleeping there. Of course, he wasn't there. He was taken. In his mind, he thought it's one hour. He came back 60 years. The servant of Prophet Jeremiah. What am I talking about? I'm trying to tease you and to cause you to raise your, your, your antennas so that you begin to understand that there are spiritual things and mysteries in the scripture that it has not been opened up to you because you have closed yourself up in order for you to see the mind of God. Because anytime you look at the scripture, the scripture rhymes, it will repeat itself. This is why you can, there is so much one hour everywhere. There is so much one hour. The last time I count is getting to about 100. And in those, any of those one hour, there is a miracle or something happening. Hmm. And if that is the case, If that is the case, then there is a distance between two places. And that distance between physical and the spiritual realm, because Jesus said, praying at least for one hour will not get you into that temptation. That means that there is a distance between when the things of the spirit begin to manifest in the flesh. And don't get it twisted. Don't be deceived. This world, as you see it, there is more beyond this world that your eyes do not see. And the reason why you do not see is that you are limited because of the domain you are. Sometimes when the Spirit of God will, it takes you and shows you a little peak like a fog somewhere. Because of the limitation of this flesh, you cannot go through these gates, these, these entrances, these spiritual doorways, unless you are guided by the Spirit of God. But in one hour, it means a distance a mystery between the spirit and the physical realm. So they were shouting, in our one hour, Babylon has fallen. In one hour, this thing has happened. In one hour, that thing has happened. In one hour, why? Because they were not only defeated. You see, let's go back to Revelation chapter 7, 18. I'll show you something quickly before we go. I want you, I want you to pay attention to this carefully. Can we read? Revelation chapter 18. Yes, Revelation chapter 18. I want us to read. From verse 8. Verse 8. Yes. Therefore, in one day, mm -hmm. her plugs will overtake her. Mm -hmm. Death, mourning, and famine. Yes. She will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord who judges her. So, in one day, in one day, these are the things that are going to happen. Do you see that it says in one day? 
how can one day become one hour? <laughs> I don't know if you get it now. Hmm. Because it's talking about two things. One is a physical thing. The second one is a spiritual thing. Are you with me? In one day, in one day, therefore, Shahi plagues come in one day. Okay? Now, if you go to verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour, yeah. There is a spiritual time and there is a physical time. The one day of the judgment and one hour of what? The spiritual ways. There is a time. There is a time frame that is going on. So something happened in the spirit that demonstrating in the flesh. That is why I tell you, you can read it. It took me some time for the Spirit of God to reveal this revelation to me. It's talking about two different dimensions. The right are just writing together. But when you look at it and you understand the scripture and you allow the Spirit of God to lead you, you realize that it's talking about two different dominions or places or realms. Two different things. In the whole day, it's a spiritual day. But in that one hour, it's a physical thing that is happening. So the whole day is a spiritual thing that has happened over there. Are you with me? Yeah. The whole day is a spiritual thing that has happened over there. But in one hour is a demonstration of what is happening in the physical realm. Why? In the whole day that those things were happening. Listen to me carefully. The only person who was making comment was the woman which is the religion, the demonic enchantations and the demonic authorities. But when you come from verse, verse 10, going, the people who are making comments are the merchants and the kings of this world because they could not see that spiritual thing happening there. But now they can see that in one hour, suddenly, one hour, something has happened, and therefore they started making comment of it. But they did not make comment on the one dating. They have been, they're only making comment on one hour. Hmm. Because something has happened in the spirit. You understand that in that one day, in the spirit have to occur before the one hour to happen in the physical realm because it's different time frames. It is different spiritual area. It is different spiritual dominions. So something must happen in the spirit. The woman got busted. The demons got busted down in the spirit. Then in one hour, they started crumbling down. Everything started crumbling down. And the kings of this world, the main chance, people who have been corrupted and made rich out of it, they started screaming and crying and wailing. Because they see the gravy train all of a sudden, everything is coming down. Everything is going down. Everything is going down without any warning. Talk to them. This is why I tell you, brothers and sisters, there is nothing called accident in Christianity. There's nothing called accident. If you think there is accident in Christianity, then you are still, 
You are still a baby. You don't understand spiritual things. Oh, 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 I accidentally fell. I, I, I accidentally knocked my head. Oh, accidentally. Uh, you, you, you are still sleeping. Accidentally. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Your spirit. Your soul, they are in different realms. They are in two realms at the same time. Your soul, your spirit, because they are entities who, who have to dwell in the body. In other words, your spirit, your soul, they have possessed your body. Just like a demon came to possess your body. The only difference is that the body belongs to them. It is their rightful location. When a demon came to possess, to torment a man or a woman or anything, they come to take somebody's rightful location and torment the owner of the house. But because you were made by God with yourself, because your soul is who you are. The spirit is what keeps your soul alive, the engine, because that is the life of God. You see, the Bible says, God breath is breath into you, and that breath sparks an engine inside you. The breath of God, it, it's called Roha. Roha means a wind, a spirit, or or, 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 or a wind, oxygen. And when the Bible talks about the spirit, it means that you, the, 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 the action of God, the activity of God, God manifesting himself. This is why I say that you are a manifestation of God in the flesh. Because you have the peace of God inside you. But the soul is you. This is why somebody say, oh, my soul feels so bad. Uh, you see, because you, uh, when somebody feels suicidal, you go to the hospital, they give the person uh, 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 some sort of induced drugs to take. And you know, hope, hopefully, when they drug you a lot, you, 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 you psychotic drugs, you think that it's going to help you. So you take it today, you take it tomorrow, you take it today. What happens is that when you keep taking it, you think it's helping you. But what is happening is that it's damning down your body. But the problem that is affecting your soul is still there. And if the problem is not fixed, the more you take the drug, you realize that tomorrow you have to take higher because the problem of the soul has compounded. It has not fixed the need of it. The more it's taking too long, the more the need is rising. Therefore, the more you are also have to take more dose to overcome something, the soul's need or the demand of the soul. Then one day you realize that the drugs are not helping again. And because you did not run to the one who gave that soul into that body, what happened is that you decide to take your life because the soul cannot contain itself into this body. These are the spiritual things. This is why in the olden days, there was no mental health issues. But now there is mental health because those days they had, they believed, they had a belief in God. And those who were tormented, there were enough preachers who have the power of God to cast demons out from people. So the torment of the enemy was handled. Right now, if you begin to pray, I remember I was praying for someone on Clifton Street. Man keep jacking like that. And somebody came, no, 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 you can't do this here. You can't do this here. Please, please say, hey. What you do not understand 
is that the devil does not want somebody to eat his lunch. But the devil is standing by your lunch with a big fork. And the mistake that you make, the simple mistake you make is your last mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, things that we see that we think we know, we know nothing. That's what the Bible says. They are deeper things because everything is in revelation. It's a spiritual thing. And when you do not allow the spirit of God to guide you, to show you, because if you begin to look at the Bible, you can see things where you're caring. Calling each other, it's like a formula. It's calling each other, calling each other, repeating, repeating. Why? Because there's a reason why it's happening. Like that. In one day, the whole demon, the whole authority, the whole powers were defeated in one day. But in one hour, it demonstrated in this world, which physical world, in the merchants and the kings of this world, got shocked that in one hour everything is gone. But they do not know that it is happening in another spiritual day somewhere before manifesting in that hour. I want you to start praying with me. That in the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God should open our eyes to understand things in these end times. That we may not be swayed by the trickery of the enemy, the lies of the enemy, the ignorance of the spiritual and physical things. And we may not allow the devil to rule over us and our children and our family. And it's in end times we will stand for the grace and the glory of God.